Okay, we are continuing today building shapes in the free browser-based program, Vector.com. Um, as I work through it, I want to make sure that once I, I have finished with the shape, like the mouth here, the background, that I take them all the way to 100% opacity. And eventually what I'll do is I'll turn off my sketch and I'll just select all the layers by drawing a box around them, all the different paths. And then I will give them all the same background color, which is just the solid black at 100% opacity. Because sometimes the defaults, and this is true in Adobe Illustrator as well, is not 100% black. It's like an 80% black, so that you'll see black on top of black. But at the end of our, our finished black shape logo, we just want it all to be black shapes. So this is what I have so far. This is not too cohesive yet. I need to add a lot more of these containing shapes. And I don't get to just draw them as lines, as simple lines. We're going to be learning digital inking in the next project in assignment seven. So instead, what do I need to focus on? Just using the pen tool and continuing to build more paths. And so an interesting shape like this, it's a little challenging. So I'm just gonna walk through with the pen tool. I start, I'll click and just start without curves. And then when I get to a curve, I click and I drag to start a curve then it will continue being curved. But I can change it later if I need to. And then it will go straight. But if I'm on a curve, then I want to click and drag. And now it will continue to be curved. And then I click, and now it's going to be straight until I click and drag and tell it to be a curve. And then I click, and it will continue to be a curve. I can adjust and then it will be a straight until I tell it to be a curve by clicking and dragging and then it's going to be a curve even though I want it to be straight here and because it was a curve it's not perfect oh, I gotta do a better job using spacebar instead of ah. Ah, I just missed all of that. So, so if you're on a trackpad, don't use your two fingers to move around the image, even though that's very convenient. Just because it's on a browser, I'm accidentally, you know, flicking them in such a way that sometimes, like I just did there, it will it will go back to the previous site. So it's doing a a browser shortcut. So instead, in order to move around your image, especially when you're zoomed in, just hold down spacebar. So I'm again going to repeat these steps. Oh, good, it's remembering, it's catching up. Okay, also, I can see it on my screen. You might not be able to see it, but you see how this, this black is a little bit different than this black? And sure enough, it's not quite fully in the corner. So that's why at the end, I'll, I'll push everything to the same. Okay. So let's go back to where what we were doing here. I need to get used to using the space bar. When you hold down the space bar, it will show you a little hand. That little hand means you can move around with whatever tool you're using, a mouse, a trackpad. Okay, so now if I double click on this, I can see the anchor points. And I did a good job of closing the path, but because it's a curve, I get the little handles. So if I double click on it, it will no longer be a curve going into that. It will be a straight. And then also I can adjust these, right? So I can click and I can adjust the curves to be a little bit smoother. And then on anything that was a straight, 
Oh, this just doesn't move as fast as I would like. To the side, come on. So what happened here often happens when you're doing vectors, especially when you're not zoomed in. <laughs> this is gonna take forever without using the two fingers. Okay, so if I double click, you'll see it's just that curve. Come on. Ah. Command Z if you do something you don't want. So I just double click on it and I'll see all the anchors. I can see the anchor. You see how it's looping around on itself? So what I want to do is click on that point. And I have to see where that curve is coming from. There, there. And what I can do is simply add a new anchor point and then delete this one. All right. And then I have a little bit more control of that edge. And then these inside ones, if I want to round that out, which I think I do, where two straights come together, I just pull it in. And now I have rounds that are a little bit more consistent. And if I'm worried that I have other ones like that, you'll see there, if I wanted to round that, I can hold down Shift while I pull in the corner, and it will do it on all ends, which is a good way to kind of simplify some of your marks. Okay, now the other difference is this now has what it calls a border, but we don't want any borders in our finished work. We want everything to be a filled in shape. So I'm gonna click on color instead, and I'm gonna uncheck the border. And there we go. So that's a complex shape. Let's look at some of the other ways we can do it. We can use the pre-made shapes like the rounded rectangle. And then we can modify it, double click on it so we see the anchor points. Very few anchor points, right? But I can add one. I can add one here. And then I can drag them up and keep them as straights first. And maybe I even like them as straights, right? Just because you sketched one way doesn't mean you can't change your mind a little bit. but in fact, I think I'm going to turn those into curves. I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to turn all the straights into the same amount of curve, like that. And if I want to, I can actually turn that anchor point into a curve by double clicking on it and then adjusting the lengths. And then same thing with the one underneath. and I can get the mark. Now you can see how you can use this to do just incredibly clean, very geometric, very horizontal and vertical logo solutions. But that's not really what my design is. Mine's a little bit more kind of hand-drawn and funky. But in the spirit of what we're doing, I think I'm gonna soften the point here a little bit. by double clicking. Oh, interesting. So this was a shape that it made, right? But it has two, two shapes overlapping there. So sometimes you have to really look at the anchor points to see how they're designed. And I don't want it to come to a fine point. I want to soften this shape. So how can I do that? Well, first, I can move the anchor points around a little bit, and then I can hold down shift and drag at the corners and soften them. But ultimately, if I wanna soften both of these and it's a shape 
it was a custom shape that was made that's not allowing me to because it was constructed in a way that wasn't fully closed. Then what I can do is I can combine it with another shape. So let's take like a rounded ellipse and soften both of them like that. These are two overlapping shapes. Then I hold down shift, select both of them, and then I merge them together. So now I've made a new complex shape that when I click on it and double click on it, I should be able to work them together. So these are some of the struggles, right? And if you want to avoid all of that, that's where the pen tool comes in. So you can just really control the exact shape you want. So it goes to a curve, the curve continues, doesn't need to be exactly right, I just need to make sure I, I finish the loop first. Click and drag to turn that straight into a curve, continue that curve, go ahead and leave that as a straight because it's all now uh, solidified. Now I can curve what I want to just a little bit, right? And I can move points in and I can adjust the curve of them. If I hold down command, I can adjust both sides of the handles and I can make this the shape I want. And then of course I want to change it from being a border to being a fill, a background fill. All right, next. I'm gonna keep using the pen tool, keep building these up. If you're having a lot of difficulty with it, just never make curves. So for instance, I can just do this all even though this is one full curve, I can do it all with straights, and then I'll show you how you can curve it after. Because I know the pin tool can be really frustrating when you're just first learning it. So this is a method. And remember, you need to work on all sides of it so that you completely, whoops, so that doesn't happen. So you can completely work it around to the end. Yeah, unfortunately now it's two different paths, but I'm gonna overlap them and then merge them together. But that seems to still keep them kind of separate. So let me see if this will work. Nope. So I have to go back again until I work all the way around. Because you need contained paths, closed paths. Okay, so I'm back to where I began. I start, it closes the path, and then I can delete the path that's underneath it. You know, so I just have the one path, I double click on it. I can see all the anchor points. It was made entirely with straights. I can pick any one of them, use the, the corner tool, right? Hold down shift and then just pull and it will soften all of them, right? And that's not the same as turning them into curves, but that can soften your your hard edges just a little bit. And the, the harder the corner is, the more it will soften. So that's the rounding corner tool. Okay, so that's one way I could do it. And that would look kind of like a, a like it was hand inked a little bit more. But the way I'm gonna do it with the pen tool is I'm gonna start with straights, and then I'm gonna use the curves by clicking and dragging. Then it's a straight again, and then I just find the edge of the curve, and I click and drag. This is not a perfect circle. 
then I go to where I know I want 